Hey everyone, David C. Anderson from the Knife Center coming at you from SHOT Show 2020. We're here with David's son at the Wee Knife booth. We've got some cool new Wee knives, we've got some cool Civivi knives. We're gonna look at those first and we got some uh, a little some prototypes, some some unfinished definitely, stuff. Definitely. Excited hey to check it out. Welcome to the SHOT Show 2020. Uh, what do we David, got first? Well, Dave and Dave. Yeah, that yeah, was it's a good, good it's a very good name. <laughs> Alright, so we'll start with the uh, Civivi side first and then we'll move forward. Uh, first one I want to introduce to you is the Rustic Gent from CVV. Now the Rustic Gent, based on the traditional styling and the lockback, has been very popular since its inception. What we did with the Rustic Gent is we added a stainless steel with a massive steel blade to it so that while you retain that grippy Macarta handle, uh, the traditional styling will also give you a little flair with the stainless damascus. Also, since it's stainless, the upkeep is kept to a minimum. As always, you'll, all, you'll still get the uh, full grain leather sheath with a clip with this knife, and you can put it's it It's really in. great for keeping it. It's not gonna be floating around in the bottom of your pocket. And always remember to annoyed. display what you're carrying. Okay, next is the, a variation of the Chronic. The Chronic in this regular uh, split for form has been received very well. And what we want to do is, one, we're going to give you an upgrade to the same stainless uh, Damascus steel blade. And two, we're making a change to the way it's open. It is now a front flipper. Very nice slim carry with that knife and really classy with this carbon fiber. Now, is this a carbon fiber with G10? Yes. Underneath? Yeah. Reversible deep carry pocket clip. Great executive knife. Thank you. Uh, next, this one's new. Uh, this is the the ODM from Civivi. Uh, it's based on the uh, Malice from the uh, Wii Knife. From the Wii Knife line, the it's full a, size version. Right, exactly. Yeah. It's a smaller brother from Fern Forge. And I think uh, if you watch my video from the SHOT Show, you probably got tired of me telling the story of naming this knife. But uh, we ran through Irritant, ran through uh, the H you can't scratch, the Ennui, and uh, at one point it was the Grudge Knife. <laughs> And eventually we decided it's not so much malicious, but it's still odious. Therefore, odium. A very compact knife, G10 handle, G10 backspacer, a deep carry clip, and a very firm forge style knife. When you carry this knife, you look at it, the sliding cue just says firm forge. Absolutely. Instantly recognizable for sure. Absolutely. Very comfortable too. I like the it's rounded nicely here on the edges, so it, it melts into the hand really nicely. Kind of a three-finger grip for me, but you have that, uh, that the troiler, troiler right too. There. And it's a slightly contour handle that fills your hand. Yeah, yeah. And a few different colors too. We just have the OD green here. Yep. Got orange, black. We got orange, we got black, we got tan, we got OD green, we have gray. Those are the five that I can remember off the top of my head. Sure. Very cool. Yep. Thank you. Now we go into the fixed blade. The Kepler, that's a full-sized camping, hiking knife, and it's ready to take on the world, no matter where you are. You have a very, very deep choil here, and it puts your fingers below the cutting edge. So you're holding this knife, and you're trying to cut, your finger will not stop your blade from touching all the way to the cutting board. With some jimping to help you get your grip, and with a big linear hole, so you never lose this knife. What's the steel on this one? Uh, the steel on this one will be D2, as we currently plan it, uh, but it may change between now and the time when it comes out. It will come with a Kydex sheath with a clip for easy belt carry. Very nice. The plank. It's obviously a crembit, but it's also long enough that you can use as any other conventional grip. Again, with the uh, deep, deep blade cutout, so you can use this for any utility purpose without worrying the your knuckle is going to hit the board. Yeah, I think that would be even be almost even better possibly at sort of camp cooking, at least with smaller stuff. You got more reach there. But a great box opener, great Absolutely. utility knife. Absolutely. I like that. Kydex sheath with this as well? Kydex sheath with this for easy carry. And D2 steel? D2 steel, nice. as currently planned, was coated 
And just because you're in camping doesn't mean you don't need a cram there. You never know. You never know. You never know. All right. So now we move into the Wii side of things. Uh, first, I'm going to go over the Yakula. It's our kitchen knife. And this kitchen knife, for me, at least when I use it, the high point is a rounded spine and sharp point. So I can do a lot of fine work with it. Now, I'm a bachelor. I don't really cook, cook. So for me, the kitchen knife I need is the one knife that does everything. Mm -hmm. The Yakula is that knife. You have a very rounded oval handle so that it stays in. It doesn't go anywhere. You got a linear if you ever want to keep it on the hook. And when I start chopping or start slicing hard, that rounded spine really that helps me. spine, yeah. Give nice me and comfy. very, very comfy uh, in my, on my fingers. At the so it's kind of like the size there is kind of in between like a large paring knife and a small petty knife yes. in a way, kind of bridging yes. that gap. So a little bit between the two. A little bit everything. There's a nice pinch pr point right there, a little taper towards the, towards the, blade, the blade, so you yeah. can pinch very easily right there. Nice and comfortable. The carbon fiber looks great too. Little mosaic pin for that accent. And this is just time. a this is just a prototype right it's now. Just yes. A prototype. Okay. But it probably will not be a lot of major changes. The next two come from designer Justin Lundquist. The first one is called the Angst, which, by the way, was also at one time the possibility for the ODM. Yeah. Until we found out that Justin was using that name. Mm. <laughs> names are hard. Na names in the are. Knife industry. Oh boy, <laughs> the names are a stiletto style blade. Uh, it's single edge, though it looks like it's double edge, because it has a very thin upper bevel to help you pierce through. The integral guard, when you close it, forms that flipper. And I was holding this earlier, this is a very lightweight knife as well. Yes, open frame yeah. design with titanium and carbon fiber definitely bring the weight down quite a bit. Yeah, like it, it was definitely surprising. I expected a little bit more weight. This is going to be very easy to stash somewhere out of the way until you need it. Yeah, very nice. Very much so. And speaking of stashing out of the way, <laughs> we have the next OSS Dagger by Justin Lundquist. The OSS Dagger was designed, mostly used in World War II, as a deep, deep hideout dagger that was sewn on into your lapel. And for our version of the OSS Dagger, we give you a multi-function sheath. This is the sheath you will receive. You can see it clearly, it comes with a belt clip. And that's a locking style clip? It's a locking style clip. If I can do it with one hand, which I Here, probably can. There we go. There we go. So it opens and it locks closed. The latches on either on both sides, when you push it, it helps the lock open it. And it will come to us a neck chain. So when you put it in, you can carry this as a neck knife. And with the chain, it's breakaway, so if it gets breakaway. snagged on something, Absolutely. no problem Absolutely. there. And once you take the chain out, you can actually sew this sheath into your clothing somewhere and create an authentic lapel dagger, like it was meant to. The dagger itself is made from uh, 20 CV, extra tough, but very, very lightweight. It will come with a G10 on the back, where it pokes through some of the uh, holes on the front, give you that extremely important grip, in my opinion, when you do the thumb hold. Sure. Because it will not slide. It will come with a, uh, a linear, because it is pretty small. If you really need to, you can use the linear to help you pull that knife out. And it'll also give you a little bit of extra finger grip Absolutely. with your pinky to hold on to the blade Absolutely. too. So that's the old stagger. Uh, next we move to the Gava. The Gava is a knife that has a lot of authentic touches, of artistic touches. If you look at the blade and the handle, there are millwork everywhere. It carved everywhere with, with a lot of geometric shapes so that no matter what angle you look at the knife, it looks slightly different. Even on the back spacer, you can see the work that was put into it. Absolutely. Milled out, not quite a semi-floating design, but you have a few little cutouts there. Again, nice and lightweight. Thin blade. Thin blade. Yeah. And yeah. Is, this, is this out now or is this still just a prototype? Uh, everything you see here is a prototype. Okay. That will be released sometime in 2020. Okay. Yeah, I like that thin blade stock with that high grind. It's going to be a very efficient slicer with that combination of things. 
And a little inter interesting little cutout there yes. going on and too. And it matches the rest of the handle cutout so that it feels like it's part of that knife. Yeah. Very nice. Now we talked about the Odium. The next is Frem Forge's take on the Wii knife. It's called the Minax. A giant solid knife. Yeah. <laughs> with a lot of intricate milling here, here, and also on the back. So 360 milling. Uh, and also the back spacer. And when you hold this in your hand, it, I mean, I, I can say about Frem Forge's design is that their ergonomics are outstanding. And with their unique style cue, it hits you from both fronts, both of the functional and the aesthetics. So you, you will not have a disappointing knife from Frem Forge. And again, it's not exactly like anything else they've made, but still you see it and it's, it's a Frem Forge. You that style cue is definitely yeah. there. The edges on the troil here are nice and chamfered, so they, they're comfortable when you choke up. I like how the, the milling here kind of makes you think of the, the opening path of the blade. You've got that circle around the pivot, so to speak. It looks rather nice. Very stylish piece. Blade steel on this one? Uh, blade steel, I believe, is s 35 in or M390. We haven't decided which one yet. Sure, sure. Very cool. The pier by Ostop Help. So you have a very slim knife very straightforward profile, but open frame design. So it's extremely lightweight. You have two, uh, two styles. One was a G10 on the front, and one was carbon fiber, give it an extra fancy touch. So standard rear flipper. Yep. It pops open. I like the geometry of the blade here with that deep swedge going the whole way. Gives you that oct octagonal cross section, so it's gonna move nicely as Absolutely. you cut through things. It's gonna be very good. And if you notice, here, the little hole on the on the blade mm -hmm. that's become like a trademark of our type's design. We've seen that from him before. Yep. Yes, yes, very cool. Single Careful. position pocket clip. Yep, single yep. position. Very nice. Excellent executive knife right here as well. And the gentleman's tactical has become quite popular in the recent years. Yeah, I remember Knife Center has an article on that. Yeah, yeah. So the moat, also by Astep, a small knife that's ready for big jobs. So with the uh, three inch carrying restriction almost nationwide, this knife will let you go through just 50 states and there won't won't re won really raise any eyebrows. Wow. It's definitely on the smaller side, and less, and it's not a super pointy blade, so it's not as scary as some other things out there. Yeah, with my relatively small hand, I'm getting a three and a half finger grip on this. So it's definitely on the small side, but when you hold it, the ergonomics is perfect. And with a grip up here, uh, with a jimping up here, you can definitely put some force into it without feeling it will slip out of your grip. And a good amount of edge on it too. You get yep. the edge is coming almost clear back to the scale and your fingers right up behind it so it doesn't feel like you're really losing too much there. And if there. you really feel that this knife grip is too small for your hand, there is a linear hole here. You can add a linear to add some grip to it. Give you an extra, extra finger there. Extra finger, yeah. absolutely. The next one is called the Roman by Alessandro De Santis. It's a front flipper. I, I, I'm gonna embarrass myself with this one. Maybe not. <laughs> Thank you very much for the encouragement. A very unique shaped knife. You have a, uh, a heart hitting pommel here, and then you have a very, very piercing knife here. This remind me of what a Vagabond would use almost like because it will fit into every part of the daily task you might need a knife for. I've used this to pick olives out of a jar. <laughs> slice your bread, slice your cheese, cut your meat, uh, pound some, I don't know, pound some nuts into, some, in, into obedience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're really drunk, serves as a nice defensive knife. <laughs> Again, another very lightweight knife overall. Titanium handles. Titanium, yep. absolutely. And it definitely kind of brings that classic, some of the like the ethnic Spanish knives yes. into the, the shape. Navaja. Yes, exactly. I, I couldn't remember the word, so I was stumbling around it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Very nice piece, yeah. yeah. And now the grooves on the handle give a very unique characteristic. Give you a little bit of grip and remove a little bit of weight too at the same time, just a little Reusable. bit. Yep. Yeah. Yep. See, I embarrassed myself with it. It's a very cool piece. A lot of length there, too. Yep. Nice full handle. I mean, 
we talk about people with bear paws. I think an actual bear <laughs> would have enough space there. <laughs> enough for just tonight. about anybody. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be able to get a good grip on that. And if not, you've got bigger problems. <laughs> this next design is from Todd Knives by Taro and says Todd. This was a slightly different from their usual design because their usual design uh, focuses on that worn cliff, which I love very much. But this one has a more of a traditional belly, I guess you might say. It's a kind spear of a leaf-shaped blade almost. Right, spear point. absolutely. Yeah. But look at the the marble carbon fiber in the front. That gives a very striking appearance. Right is that off marble that. or is that shred? Actually, uh, marble or shred. Uh, you know what? Yeah. I might be using two words interchangeably. So my apologies for the carbon fiber patterns <laughs> the out, out there. there yeah. It looks fantastic. You, you, Absolutely. And I like the addition of the carbon fiber on the yeah. back as well as the it's sort a, of over travel right, stop. It was that travel, travel stop. Although, I think, yeah, I think that the, the aesthetics of it, it probably works more than as a, more than a travel stop because I've yet to see someone who can really push that lock bar so much that it breaks. Having said that, I'm sure in the comments I will now see people vowing that they're broken. <laughs> so my, my hand strings is now put to shame. I apologize. <laughs> so the top knife. Very cool. Nice grip again. Plenty of length, especially with that finger choil right there. Yeah, very nice. So next one is the Buster, the Mini Buster rather, from Snacks Design Lab. And again, I think I mentioned about four or five times how much I'm in love with Warren Club. And this one, I love. Because one, it's a ship's foot with a straight edge, reverse handle, Warren Club, however you want to call it. But look at the work that was put into the knife. All the surface has some geometric pattern carved into it. So just looking at it from every angle shows you it's a different knife. And like, is the, the backspacer there, is that actually showing a more of a polished finish? Yes, it versus is. Versus the bead blast on the side? Absolutely. So give it a little contrast mm -hmm. when you turn the knife around because it will reflect more light. I don't know if that's actually possible. You can see that. Yeah. So, the Mini Buster. Nice little color accents here. I like that. And it's a wee knife, so it flips great. It's, it's great. It's a great flipper. Very nice. All right. We have two here from in-house Wii Design. Uh, because these are definitely prototypes, they don't even have names yet. What, it, what they are, are thin, slim profile, gentleman tactical, uh, titanium, titanium handle, s 5 vm blade, with a relatively high clip, so that it doesn't disappear in your pocket, but it gives you enough real state to grip onto it, and that linear can also extend out of the pocket. So you got two handle designs here. One has a groove with holes in it, and one has this infinite circle. Which isn't too aggressive. It's kind of just the right depth. For that, for that grip aiding. Where you get that grip without it being right. a hot spot. But see how thin that thing is. I'd say again, thin construction and thin blade stock again. Yeah, absolutely. Thin, thin is the way to go if you really want to slice efficiently. It's lightweight, it fits in your pocket, you will forget that it's there. Especially with that hollow grind behind the edge there, it's going to be so, so thin. Yes, absolutely. Cool. All right. Last, but definitely not least, was the knife that I went out and find. This is also from Justin Lundquist. And it has a very dramatic name, which I feel actually fits it very, very appropriately. The Black Void Opus. <laughs> the antique finish and the carbon fiber really bring out a bit of the, the it, it, it makes this knife feel very, very classy, very classic. And it's got history or story behind it. Mm -hmm. And the beat blaster blade, it's a front flipper as well. But it's a very, very low profile. It's very see, subtle, yeah. You can see how how small it protrudes uh, above the handle. And just follows the, the top of the handle Absolutely. right there. Yeah. And there we go. So here, this this knife, I, I feel it's it almost has to be felt in your hand mm -hmm. to feel how, how what a special knife it is. It's nice. I, I'm very, very much We've taken got, with this knife. We've got the stone washing on the titanium 
kind of, it feels like it's picking up the color in the carbon fiber it does. almost. It does. So it, it integrates together very nicely. And this is actually a chisel grind knife as well. It's going straight down here with the swedge and then the secondary bevel. You, I noticed at first when it was closed, you see that yep. I there. Even, so I even grind, yep. Definitely a little something extra. Very nice. Okay, so from this point on, we're gonna give the true prototypes. Uh, these are something special because it's an honor to work with Mr. Bob Perzuola. Absolutely. Who can be called the godfather Bob, Bob of type of knives. Yeah. And we are reimagining one of his classic knives, the Highway Rescue. Uh, Scuttle knife handle, you have the bit holder, and you have the, uh, the, the oxygen tank wrenches on here. It will be a super lightweight, and we're going to fit it with the Kydex sheath. So it's a... And if you're going to use those wrenches, make sure you use it with the sheath on. Don't grab the blade. We have to say that. We have to say that for safety's sake. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, so you can you can definitely paracord grip this uh, for more you know more premium power, but you take away some of the functionality of the knife. All the edges you can feel here have been rounded, so it is comfortable in your hand, and hopefully you will need that paracord really until it's truly necessary. Sure. Absolutely. And this is Bob's tamash tamashi. Tamashi? Tamashi. I'm sure I'm pronouncing like this, this word eight ways to Sunday wrong, but please, in the comments, Let teach me know. how to say the word. No nonsense fighting knife. That, that's what this fighter. knife is. It's yeah, definitely I, a fighter. I would have said hunting profile myself, personally. Just guessing. Well, hot hunting. We <laughs> <laughs> but when I see this knife, I mean, I see this as a, a extremely functional knife, mm -hmm. but if you're on a hunting utility, it's, it's probably not in its functions very much. But this knife, you'll definitely feel comfortable with if you're in a bad situation. It gives Even you in a, a lot reverse of grip as well, yeah. Absolutely. And is this, we, we don't see the tank, but is this full tang? Uh, this will be a full tang indeed. With the G10 made it up perfectly, so you don't have any of that cold edges or sharp no, edges no. sticking out. For that out. comfy hold. And a clean look, too. Very much so. Yeah. A classic Terzola, I would say. Very nice. Yep. And Bob's knife has always been known for its functional in addition to its beauty. And Bob, this one is from Bob's family, from Alex, Alex Wees. So Alex actually won award at the 2019 USN show. So this one is going to be a full tank because you can see this is a full tank. Yeah. It's a very simple knife. It's a, it, it's just, one piece of steel with two uh, handle scales on it with a hidden linear hole you can see in here. But ergonomics is where this really shines. It's a full size handle with a short blade so you have maximum control over it. But here, hold this in your hand and you see what I mean. And then the other thing that's hidden too is any attachment hardware. I don't see Absolutely. any pins here. Is it, are these glued on, epoxied on, or do we have hidden pins underneath, do you know? I believe these are actually uh, getting prepared for the hidden pins. I believe the custom was hidden pins. That feels very good. Yes, absolutely. Nice manageable length too. You can get your index finger out to the tip very easily. Very cool. All right, I have one last thing I want to show you, and this is something special and something I've been carrying for the last, uh, today's January, so about the last three months. Just a simple tube, Terzola logo on here. Mm. It's a button, so you twist to unlock and slide it forward. Also twist lock. It's a pair of tweezers, something that everybody needs. When you really need it, you realize there's nothing that can replace That's a true. good pair of tweezers. So this pair of tweezers has a linear hope, and if you are a fly, and fish, uh, fly fisherman, you can actually hang this on your vest. You can see how fine the tips are. Yeah. And I am squeezing this extremely hard. They, one come, of, they come together very they precisely together. too. And they will hold together. One of Bob's requirement, primary requirement is no matter how tight you squeeze that. You trigger, don't want it bowing it back out. Right, exactly. Yeah. There you go. Nice. I can definitely see that. 
I like the finish here too. It's like brass but antique looking. I, yep. Um, black. Steel, I'm assuming. Uh, or, yes, steel. So it will be uh, black and uh, anodized, then stonewashed. Sure. And this is the one I'll be carrying on my keychain yeah. for the last three months. So I will vouch that this will go through TSA without a second look. There you go. It will not cause you any problems in the airport. All right, guys, that's all we've got to show you today. I know there's a lot of stuff that's in the prototype stages, but we're going to leave links if you want to get your hands on any of this stuff. We're going to make sure to leave links in the description below to head over to KnifeCenter.com and get your hands on them. David, thanks so much for taking time. Thank you for having me. Showing us all this great, cool new stuff. It was my pleasure. Keep sticking around for all the rest of our SHOT Show coverage. Thanks, guys. Thank you.